All right, guys, good morning. We're going to do some fun fruit doodles and make a pretty plate on a tablecloth. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, I am so happy that you're here. We're going to be doing four or five fun fruit doodles. We'll do them individually and then pile them all together as a picnic on the porch with a pretty tablecloth. Mm, that's kind of an interesting statement, isn't it? <laughs> but this is fun. I just did this about uh, 20 minutes ago, so the paper's still even a little bit damp. I was testing to make sure that my idea was going to work. I woke up and it was like, oh, let's put all the fruit doodles on a plate. <laughs> So good morning and welcome to everyone joining. I really appreciate you being here. Make sure you have clicked that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. I'm doing doodles and watercolor and colored pencil, pen and ink, Monday, Wednesday, Friday-ish. You know, as the summer goes on, it might be more, it might be less. And I'm uh, okay with that. I hope you are. And let's just get started. I'm going to be doing my doodles to start off with in my little folded doodle book. Now, this is the one that I've been using all along the last week or so. We've got all these fun doodles that we've been doing. See, this was the last, last class that we just did was the uh, fun treats. If you haven't already watched this video, go watch the video and make sure and answer the question in the comments for a chance to win. I'm going to turn around here. This fun unicorn popsicle rainbow. <laughs> so you have to watch that treat video. It's the one with this as the thumbnail. So you'll know which one it is. Look for this on the thumbnail, go watch that video, find out what the question is, answer it in the comments of that video, of this video, the popsicle video. Yeah. All right. For a chance to win that card for free anywhere in the world. <laughs> All right. So May's book. Now all of this, the front side, look at that. front side of this is already all drawn on, but we can use the back side. I just dropped my pen. So we're going to use the back side and draw our doodles because you know, when paper has two sides, why not use both sides? <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a morning. Good morning. All right. Oops. My paper just came loose. I want my little backing paper here just because it makes it easier for you to see the, see the little doodle book when there's something darker in the background. There we go. So I hope that you all are uh, ready. Do you have your pen? Do you have some paper? We're going to get started right now. Close up. There we go. So we're going to start off with a watermelon. And watermelon is basically just a triangle with a slightly curved back for a wedge of watermelon. That's how easy it is. I love watermelon. It's one of the most hydrating foods you can eat. My watermelon is not seedless. <laughs> now, watermelon sometimes has that thicker rind on it. So we'll put a thicker rind on it. You can do these going all kinds of directions. Stack them up. Give it a little depth. Look at that. 
give it some more seeds. This is not seedless. I like to put the seeds on, even though I like to eat seedless watermelon better. And then there might be stripes on your watermelon. So I'll go ahead and put a few like that. And look at it. We've got watermelon. We're going to do uh, strawberries. Strawberries are basically just a heart. So we're going to put a big kind of roundy heart. And I'm going to put another one right here next to it. I'm going to show you two ways for your strawberry. Your strawberry can be you know, either sliced or it can be whole. This one's going to be my whole strawberry. And this is going to be my sliced strawberry. And since my sliced strawberry is kind of at an angle, at least in my head, I'm going to go like this and draw a little bit of a wedge on that edge, a wedge on the edge. And then there's usually kind of a core in the center of a strawberry. And then there's the little fiber arms coming off that core, going out. And what usually is happening is those little fibery cores go all the way through. I'm really not going to draw them all the way through, but they go out to where the seeds are. So wherever the seeds are on your strawberry, there's usually one of those little fibery core arms coming off that center. I think I'm going to put some really loose leaves, like the half, and to make this one look a little more fancy, we're going to put some lovely little leaves and maybe a stem. And that's a leaf, not a core. So we're just going to put a couple more leaves next to it. And drawing super simple, easy fruit like this, you can do all kinds of cards. You can make invitations for that porch picnic that I was talking about. Do something special. You know, if you've got uh, family in the house and they're all going, I want to do something. I want to go somewhere. Well, why don't you do a porch picnic and send invitations to everybody in the house? I think that's a lot of fun to do. I remember doing that when I was a kid. Actually, I remember doing um, Halloween trick-or-treating in the house when it would be so soggy wet outside, we would do trick or treat in the house for my youngest sister. She's like 16 years younger than me. So, you know, all of us would be behind different doors and she would go and trick or treat the house. But, you know, have a picnic on the porch. I'm gonna make some blueberries. And blueberries, I start out random and randomly placing kind of nice big rounded U shapes or C shapes. Leave a big, big space open. And you'll see why in just a second. There. Ooh, what are we doing there? That's kind of interesting, huh? Now we're going to make that fun little crown that you see on the top of blueberries. And that's a wobbly line, roughly making a circle. Look at that. Wobbly line, connect those two outside edges of your C or your U, and then make another little one inside. Oh, I didn't quite connect, did I? Oh, well, not a big deal. I'm going to make that 
space a little bit smaller. I don't need it to be quite so big. Fresh fruit in the summertime is one of my most favorite treats. I like to go to the store when the grapes are in, uh, in stock on sale and get a ton of big green grapes and freeze, uh, wash them and then freeze them. So look at that. We're going to go like this. Oh, say you've completely closed it. That's okay. Your, your top can just be facing farther away from you. I like the giant blueberries also. And then let's see. Let's make uh, some grapes. And grapes can be basically just ovals. They can be a little misshapen. Sometimes they'll have like a little bit of a crease in them. A little bit of a stem coming off. Now you could make these grapes. <laughs> these grapes could be all kinds of things. They could actually be plums. It all depends on the way you color them. I am so glad that you are enjoying copying these doodles. You know, being able to just sit down and play, make some doodles, is just a lot of fun. If you just came in, this is what we're going to end up with today. I'm just going through and giving you some quick how to draw them. See how all of those things we've drawn? We've already drawn the watermelon, the strawberries, and blueberries. Now we're drawing a few grapes. And then we're going to start doing our whole postcard or invitation card. And you don't have to put stems on them. And when you want to just pile them up, just start connecting U shapes or C shapes underneath. Maybe another one is laying over here and there's that stem bit, the end where the stem would have been. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes they have a bit of that little split crease in them. Now these are all pulled off of the bunch, so we don't have to worry about how they connect. Um, oh, one more. We'll do cherries because cherries are really close to doing grapes. <laughs> and there's Darcy saying, hey, cherries. Yes, a cherry. Cherries are a little bit more round. And they have a bit of a divot. They can have that little split. I know that um, the Bing cherries and the Hood cherries, those Queen Anne's, Royal Anne, Queen Anne. I can never remember. But you can draw cherries to your heart's content. Now look at that. I got the stem on first. It, draw the stem on first if that makes it easier for you. Give it a divot right there where the stem is attached. And we have cherries. Maybe we'll throw some cherries on the plate. If you want, give it a leaf. fun, easy. All right. So we did do five fruits. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Let's go wide. Go to the wide view. <laughs> so see, we've got watermelon. There's going to be that rind area. We've got uh, strawberry, blueberry, grapes, and cherries. You can fill a whole um, page. Oh, this would be really great to do for um, bullet journaling. Do a whole bunch of fruit uh, on your calendar and uh, color them in as the days go by on your calendar to mark that you actually ate your fruit for the day. Do vegetables for your vegetables. It's a fun way to mark time on some, you know, on a calendar, on a tracker. So there we go. All right, we're going to get out the paper. Now this time I've got my paper uh, taped off around the edge. This one I didn't tape on the edge. We're, 
we're going to compare which way we like better. <laughs> now you're hungry for some fruit and vegetables? Yeah, I'm ready for breakfast. I haven't eaten my breakfast yet. There's going to be some fruit in my breakfast. Now, if you see here, I did a plate and my plate is a wonky circle. I didn't use anything to draw my circle for my plate, but I went and found something that I can draw a circle with. I'm going to be a little off center with it and I'm just going to try and get around here. It's not perfect. You know, there's, there's stuff on my lid that causes little bumps and wobbles. There you go. I really, really like how this wavy tablecloth turned out. So easy to do. We're going to take and draw a wobbly line. But I want the wobbly line to go down when it comes to the plate and then come out and go up. And I will do that kind of mimicking that all the way across. So you see how I'm following that wobble. I mean, this is a circle that we traced and now we're drawing wobbly lines and we're just following our wobble. Follow the wobble. And by doing it this way, you end up with the plate looking like it's sort of shifted on the tablecloth and kind of pushed it up around. See how it sort of goes up and down. It goes, it goes up and goes down towards the plate. And that's an illusion that is done in two ways. The first way is drawing our wobbly lines. And the second way is the way we put our color in so that in the down areas, we put our dark, we leave light on the very top, and then we put a darker tone going away. You see how that works? That is how you get that illusion of fabric. And it's so easy. It is so effective. And now I'm moving my little wobble all the way across. And now it's a matter of just make your stripes on your paper however you want. If you want them really close to each other, go really close. If you want them farther apart, make them farther apart. You can make this into stripes or checkerboards or whatever. But we're going to get this tablecloth doodle in first. Then we'll put the fruit on and then we'll watercolor it. So, you know, we have lots of little steps, but nothing is hard. Nothing is really hard. It's all just a matter of doing things in stages. See how this is getting that feel already? And that's because we're doing those multiple lines following a similar path, but they're not perfectly the same. And it shifts as you go around your paper, your No, you did not miss it all. Although I already did. I'm going to come back here for, for friends that have just arrived. We've already drawn, uh, shown how to draw the watermelon, strawberry, blueberries, grapes, and cherries. So <laughs> it's going to be good. And then we took a container and drew around the container to make the circle for the plate because what we're doing is this and now we're doing the wobbly lines for the tablecloth and you see how quickly this goes in you don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about making it perfect because you know what those imperfections are what make this so much fun see I'm just 
Woo, having fun. And I am having fun. I'm letting the pen wander across the page. I'm letting my eye guide my hand. So I'm just going, all right, up and down. This could be a really fun way to make uh, wobbly water on a pond. So, you know, it's definitely got that optical illusion thing going. where those lines start making your eyes wobble a little bit. <laughs> I really like those types of doodles. The fruit going in is going to be really fast. This is actually the longest part right here. See how I'm kind of curving when I'm coming out from under the plate. That just gives us more places for shadow and light. So I want to say thank you, all of you, for joining me today. And if you are interested in quick one minute or less doodles, I have a uh, fun thing that I'm doing. It's called Tangi, and it's through Google, and it is a one, one minute or less, for the most part, creative doodle or creative um, videos by a whole bunch of different people. Some are doing real time. Some, are, some people are doing the... Um, uh, speed videos. My videos, for the most part, are mostly real-time for learning how to do something. And it's all creativity. It's all um, art and cooking and gardening type videos. And if, well, when I get to my first 100, oh, look at that. When I get to my first 100 followers over on Tangi, they'll give me an extra minute so I can do two minute videos. And I've been finding working on making real time videos that get a whole project done in one minute is a huge challenge. But I end up with like one minute and 19 seconds and I could have it all done. So. How to find this pen? I'm I'm jumping <laughs> I'm jumping around in things. The eco pen here. This is waterproof. It's 0.38, and down in my information box, there's a link to a direct link to the pen, or you can uh, click on my Amazon store, my affiliate link, and that will get you. Uh, straight to my store, then you can click on my favorite doodling tools. And this is my number one favorite doodling tool right now. So that's where that is. I am going to start drawing our fruit on. So I want to put the biggest thing on here first. Biggest thing on here is going to be my watermelon. And I am going to draw my big rounded bottom triangle. And this is a funky wedge of watermelon. I am going to draw the little extra line right here for the, for the uh, peeling, for the outside rind. And then I am going to draw a little bit. I, I'm saying that we're seeing it just a little bit off the edge. So I'm going to make extend my line right there and then go up parallel and connect and that just makes it look like you can see a little bit over the edge of that watermelon now right now this could be anything couldn't it you could be making a piece of pie you could be having a wedge of cornbread uh, it could be anything 
but right now I want it to be watermelon. So I am going to put a little dashy line. I'm not going to be too harsh or hard with that line because that's just more to remind me that I want the bottom end of my watermelon here to be lighter. And then I'm putting seeds in. You don't have to put seeds in. You could have seedless watermelon, but even a seedless watermelon has some seeds. Okay. What's my next biggest thing? My next biggest thing is going to be strawberries. And I am going to do my strawberry coming out from underneath of here a little bit, underneath the watermelon. So I'm going to go up out and make a big almost heart shape and then I'm going to put my greenery on here look at that this one is my whole strawberry Excellent. Thank you for following me on Tangy, guys. And when you watch the videos, click that like button on them because that really helps also. I just got notified that some of my videos over on Tangy have actually hit over 50 views. And I know that sounds like such a tiny amount of views, but it's a brand new platform. So it's really cool when the videos start getting views. I've got flowers, real time, doodle flowers, real time, doodle owl, popsicles, watercolor. I've got a couple that are um, speed videos or partially speed, just because it's fun to watch watercolor move quickly. And then I've just, now I just put some seeds on here. See, look at that, easy peasy. I am going to put some blueberries on and then I'll put another piece of strawberry and I'll have it be a sliced bit. But let's go ahead and put our blueberries on. So those open ended circles, leave it open like a C or a U, but you don't have to leave it really wide. You can pull that in just a little bit and then you can make some that are actual circles all the way around because then you have room for your your little top see show your little top from the top down show the little top from the side it's like little crowns this is a great place to let your hand just wobble the line. And maybe that one's pointing downward. Now, when you're looking straight at it, go ahead and give it a little bit of an outline on the inside. See how fun that is? Now I want to throw that partial strawberry in there. So it's going to be laying, let's see, it's, there's a blueberry that landed on top of it or a couple blueberries, just like that. There's a bit of a core in the center of the strawberry and then put a, putting a little bit of an outline of around it, of around it. Wow. My words today. But we're just making this plate full of fruit, you know, so I guess I really don't need words, right? We're going to put another blueberry down here underneath. This is doodling. This is filling in spaces. So I'm going to kind of show a little bit of some berries along the edge and maybe even Put a little wedge here so you can see the berry berries. How about seeds of the berry? Wow, today's words. Today's words are brought to you by, I haven't eaten breakfast yet. <laughs> and this is making me hungry. Big bowl of yogurt and berries. That sounds really yummy right now. Ooh, 
Ooh, let's see. I think we're going to throw a cherry on here. Nice, big, rounded shape. And this cherry, my stem is just going to go right off over the plate. Like that. <laughs> See, it, make it up as you're going along, guys. This is doodling. This is no pressure. This is relaxation as a way, you know, a way to reduce your stress. This is one of the best ways to reduce stress that I know, you know, for me. It reduces stress like nobody's business. I think I'm going to put another blueberry right up here. I'm just doodling around going, ooh, I want to put some grapes on. So let's just sort of ovals. Sometimes you see a top. And remember, you can make these into plums if you want to. They could be those pretty little plums that grow on those or ornamental plum trees. They make a mess, but oh, they're so pretty. The purple, purple leaves. These could also be uh, olives. Doesn't this look like a pretty little picnic right here? Oh my goodness, yogurt and frozen mango. And I'll eat I'll eat plain non-fat yogurt if I have frozen mango. <laughs> Actually, I'll eat plain non-fat yogurt anyway. But definitely if I've got mango or any kind of frozen chopped up frozen fruit. Oh yeah. Okay. So I think we've got enough on here. We're going to go ahead and put our watercolor on now oh the paper is 140 pound watercolor paper by Arteza I'm they're not sponsoring this video this is just I'm the materials I'm using because this is what I have I've got a 12 pan of watercolors by Arteza and their water brush and this is a really nice round comes to a decent point too. I've been using this a lot lately. I am going to put in my tablecloth first just because I want to and it's going to be kind of a grab the mud that's on my on my palette. So look at that. I'm grabbing some darker co color here and anywhere that it's kind of in a down area And I'm saying this is down. It's going towards the down direction. Going towards the plate right there. Put a nice shadow in right around the plate. You see how your doodle helps you? Know where to put your shadow. Soften your lineup. It doesn't need to be a hard shadow. Remember, we're doing our picnic with our fruit on the front porch or the back porch. And if you have a bit of a overhang or an awning, your shadows might not be as hard. You see how that goes right there? in the down so I've got some wobbly down and up areas and if you have a hard time visualizing where your shadows are going take a take a piece of cloth and sort of lay it out flat and then push it just a little bit so it gets bumpy and look where the shadows are and where the highlights are 
Use your skill of observation to give your, your eye and your hand a place to go. Oh, that's looking cool. And remember, <laughs> I'm just grabbing the mud on my palette. I am not I did not mix up a specific color here. It's just sort of a neutral gray. It's not too blue, it's not too green. Actually, it's more on the greenish side. Shadows can reflect the colors that are around them or allow the colors around them to reflect through. Let's see, and I'm just softening up some of the shadows. Easy peasy. Don't stress over it. This is just because we're having fun. I'm going to put a little bit darker. The paper is wet. The paper is still wet. A little bit darker shadow under the edge of that plate. Or bowl or whatever you happen to be putting your fruit in and then soften the edge out just a little bit. And now, haha, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that shadow right here on the inside edge of my plate or bowl or whatever. See, give it a little bit of something doesn't have to be much this could be a this could be a frisbee for all I know but just relax as you're doing it enjoy the process have fun being chill and you know you don't even have to color it you could just go in with your pen and continue making more and more lines Oh yes, if you draw this on any paper, you can make yourself tons of little coloring sheets because I mean, really and truly, what am I doing here? I'm coloring um, and make all kinds of little coloring pages. Get a stack of them. If you do one of the little maze books, I mean, look at that. You could do a whole bunch of little drawings that you can color with anything. And this has got 16 drawings on it right now, plus uh, the five. So this has 21 little pieces of art that a person could draw or color, or draw on or color on, doodle on, have fun. So the folded watercolor book makes an awesome way to share a little coloring book with people. That is a, a class that I did really quick uh, about a week ago. All right, I want to go in and I didn't even clean my brush. I don't care. I'm going to put water on the watermelon. And what I want to do is just Try and keep the water in the watermelon right here. I'm going to take a bit of that sort of magenta and just drop. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's one of the most satisfying things in the entire world to me is putting a drop of water on, a uh, watercolor on top of water and letting it just flow. Oh, look at that. I love that whoosh. And then I'm going to grab a bit of dark green and a bit of yellow. Freshen it up just a little bit. Ooh, see how that just sucked right down? 
the water will go wherever or the paint will go wherever there's water so if i do anything right here right around that watermelon right now it's going to flow right out into it see when i was little there used to be a Well, and I think there still are. There might still be places where you can get, um, you know, color book of the month type of thing. Uh, we didn't have the internet when I was a little kid. So I just picked up some of the really dark blue. And there's a tiny touch of the magenta in it, which made it almost a purpley blue, but not quite purple. And I am putting that onto the blueberries in a sort of haphazard way. Now, blueberries are dusty. They are not shiny, but I'm leaving some white to start off with. So that way I can put in I can put in some highlights by just lifting out color or moving color into those lighter areas. But right now I've got this almost indigo blue going onto the blueberries. Just filling it in, coloring. <laughs> it's just coloring in. And see right there, a little bit of that blue just bled into the the bottom of the watermelon that's okay actually it's kind of fun when the when the colors intermix a little bit well some of these are deeper so I'm gonna put a little bit more color into them there's more shadow Maybe I'll just color the shadow in really dark. And use that color to come up and make shadows on my blueberries. So you can see the difference. This color right here is actually straight off of the palette versus the color that we had drained, uh, put a little bit of that magenta into. Keep it fresh. Keep it loose and have fun. So welcome to everybody who's just tuning in. I am Stephanie. This is Deliberately Creative and we are having fun painting some fruit. We did a few minutes where I showed how to draw our fruit on first. Now I'm taking some of this green and some of the yellow and you notice I'm not even worried about getting that green and yellow mixed up on my on my palette here or on my colors right there because you can wipe them off. When it's a dry palette like that, dry cakes, just get the surface wet and wipe it off. If you have any questions, make sure and let me know. So now I've painted in the tops. I think I am going to get more of that yellow. Just put wa more water on it. More of that yellow. And we're going to put some of that kind of yellowy green in on the grapes. Leave a few spots of highlight if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. But by making it a little bit blotchy like that, it looks like you've got sunlight shining. You've got light bouncing around. That looks good. That looks really good. Really don't need to do much more, more to that. Like, as I said earlier, Frozen fruit is one of my most favorite things. 
Ooh, look at how that's all bleeding in. We're going to let that dry and we will glaze over with a bit more of that uh, red. Yeah, it's fun. Now I'm going to grab some of the magenta and some of the sort of more red orange. I'm not sure what color that is. My card is around here somewhere with all of the names, but I'm not worried about finding it right now. I'm going to go in with my heavier, darker red right here. This is the outside of the strawberry. Put that around. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off and come back in with just water on my brush and move some of that color around. See? Maybe pick up a little bit more of that, just the orangey red and kind of warm it up just a little bit. So it's a bit, bit different than the Then the watermelon. And you can always go in with your slightly wet, damp brush and lift out a bit of the color to get back to some softer highlights. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and not get too much paint on my brush. I am going to paint my strawberry over here, the partial strawberry. I put some color, color down and now I'm going to just sort of move that little bit of color around. Tiny little bit of that color is going to slip down here into the center where the that core is. And then we can put our dark, dark, dark red right around the outside edge. And then I think I'm gonna take just a little touch of some yellow. Just to barely color that, that core bit right here in the very center. Isn't that fun? And now the cherry. I'm not going to make a red cherry. I'm going to make a, this cherry is actually going to be um, kind of a creamy yellow with just a touch of pink. They have some really beautiful cherries in the Hood River, Oregon area that I don't know if you get all around the world but these are so, so yummy. So I'm grabbing a bit of yellow and I'm just barely going to let that color just a little bit. It's, it's not a lot. Watercolor dries lighter. So don't, don't fuss. I'm going to take a little bit of that more orangey red and give it a blush. See, just like that. Oh, sweet. So I want some more color on that watermelon. And then we'll put some more color on the tablecloth, I think. And then we'll be basically, we're done. You know, we'll be done at that point. So getting, getting that red, that magenta E type red, just getting my brush wet. 
kind of glazing it on, not being too worried about where the color's going, letting it be patchy. Watermelon shows lots of reflections of light. And see how just adding just a little bit more of that color right over the top disguises that area where the blueberry bled in so much. I like the effect of it right there, but you know, it's not, it's not as apparent. And I think I want a little bit more darker green now for the watermelon rind. So this is just a really dark green. Just for that edge rind. Remember there's that um, soft, that softer area where there, it can be a little bit greenish or yellowish as it goes into being the actual fruit. So if you guys are interested in winning this fun unicorn tie-dye watercolor card, you need to watch the video with this picture on the thumbnail and answer the question on that video at, to be entered into the drawing. Just, just saying. So I'm going to put a little bit of some shadowy color and again, that's just sort of mud, dried up paint, different areas. I call it mud. It's just a neutral, just a neutral color. Makes it feel like our plate goes di down inside. There really won't be any highlight down in that area. And then it softens up as it comes up the edge. And I see that there, I just need a little bit darker. Watercolor dries lighter. So go darker than you think, or just know that you're gonna build your colors up. But this is, Basically, I mean, it's color book. It is color book style. We drew a picture, we're coloring it in. And that's how I like to do watercolor. But you can practice your techniques and grow your skills. So I hope that you guys are just having a blast doing your your watercolor or your color pencil. Let's see, maybe I'll take a little bit more of that darker blue now. Move some of those colors around just a little bit. Doodling with color, that is what I am doing here. It is doodling with color. And it's just so much fun. And it's relaxing and you don't have to worry about what the outcome is. I did not have this one specifically planned. I had an idea what I wanted to do. And I think my last idea here is that I want to put some more color out here on the On that tablecloth just a little bit don't have to you don't have to do this but what that does is it makes it fun when we pull the tape off <laughs> have a little more color on here
So I hope that you are having fun. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your vote of confidence in how this is turning out. I'm really happy with it. I think that if you have a chance to do something fun and creative, do something unexpected. Oh, wow. That is just really looking more and more like fabric, isn't it? Giving it a little more color. Just picking up color off of my palette. Maybe deepening up a couple of those shadowy bits. Not worried so much about how my brush is, you know, going on here. I This is a plastic filament. The handle has water in it. Links are down below. Oh, if you buy any of the stuff off of uh, Arteza, off my affiliate link that I do earn a small commission on, um, if you buy anything, make sure and use the coupon. I have a 10% off coupon code. It's listed down below with the Arteza links. And pretty much everything here is Arteza today except for my pen. Haven't found an Arteza pen that I like to do yet. All right, we're gonna hit this with a with a dryer and pull the tape off. I hope that you guys are having fun and that you're doodling and finding ways to, you know, relieve some relieve some stress help other people not be bored. This is a great way to uh, not be bored. And this card is going into my pile for my uh, Patreon. I am going to be doing some drawings for paid patrons over on my Patreon. And people on Patreon, they are there helping me with um, a monthly subscription donation let's tip that over and dry the backside so if you're interested in helping out my channel I have a couple different ways you can do that I have my patreon I also have a PayPal and because you guys are my you're my steadfast you're my supporters no matter what anyway and if you're interested in supporting me monetarily, that's awesome. If you don't have the funds or have the inclination to do that, sharing my channel and subscribing really helps. I am coming up on 90,000 subscribers. It's crazy, guys, but 90,000 subscribers, 90,000 people. But... Most of those subscribers, I think, came on when I was doing the paint pouring. And now that I'm doing my other types of art, not as many people have been watching the videos. Let's pull the tape off. So, I am uh, struggling to get those viewers back. And I don't think I should be. I think that... This is awesome artwork and projects that anybody can do. Oh my gosh, look at that. Totally disguises that the paper is like all warped and wobbly. If I had taped it down to an actual board and then dried it, it would have pulled it nice and flat. But I can get the back wet and then uh, just lay it underneath of a book and it will flatten out. Yeah, 90,000 is super. Getting closer and closer to that uh, 100,000 and be able to get my silver play button. You know, sometimes you just want those little treats. Silver play button would be an awesome treat to have. <laughs> so I'm only 10,000 away from my silver play button, only about 60 away from my 90,000. So thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure to do your doodle 
check out my tangy and uh, there's going to be some more fun fruit and uh, foods and flowers going on over there one minute videos I have my patreon and the PayPal so there's ways to support me if you want to buy the materials that I'm using here check those links down below for Arteza and for Amazon remember to go out and do something creative take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you and I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>